This video is a continuation of one where we looked at selecting cameras using a video hub from Blackmagic Design in this case, but it could be listening to a auxiliary um, channel on any video switcher or any video hub uh, router that you would like to use from AJ Kumo or ProBell um, protocol. Um, so there's a ton of options here, but the idea was that we were basically listening to the routing on a specific output and then letting that drive the camera selection. So as an example, this is a PC Extreme in our emulated environment here inside Reactor, which is our panel management software on the Blue Pill platform. And if I click these buttons, you can see that I'm changing cameras and configurations and all that stuff. But I decided to make the video hub drive this. So in this um, case, we created a virtual trigger. That virtual trigger is down here. That virtual trigger was listening to a condition. It would basically say, if we look inside here, listen for output number seven on the video hub and let that drive what camera we are selecting by looking uh, at a comparison to the route index for that particular source. So just quickly, we would need to then go to the uh, output number seven, but then you can see as I'm changing the routing to these destinations, it's actually changing camera. But now there are more things that when you run a big reality show or some complex broadcasting operation that you might want to do. One of them on a reality show is that you typically have groups of cameras and with those groups of cameras, um, it would be useful if you could reset them all to some kind of preset position. So it generates the idea, would it be possible to have like one button that would just reset positions of everything in the kitchen, is it? And yes, of course it is. With the Scarhoy controller, you can easily do that. By the way, with Scarhoy controllers, you can basically add as many cameras as you want. There's uh, obviously at some point resource limits to how many cameras you can have running on a PC Extreme at the same time. But rest assured, we have different ways to load balance things like having multiple Blue pills, uh, you can use blue pill servers to connect to the many cameras if um, that is a, a challenging thing. And then you can use the blue pills as a proxy for uh, for integrating the cameras inside Reactor and so on. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but you can definitely go to like uh, 50 plus cameras. We have positive confirmation this is possible. And in this case, I've even mixed cameras, Canon cameras and Panasonic cameras uh, in, in the overview you are looking at uh, right here. I kind of forgot why I went to the home screen, but I'll just go back to configuration because today we'll be looking at how we can um, recall a preset across multiple cameras. <clears throat> and we can, uh, it will be limited though to cameras of the same type in this case. But the first thing I'm thinking is where am I going to do it? Because the PC Extreme in this standard configuration that is, uh, it's just coming straight out of picking the standard configuration here, PC Extreme generic PC control. It is customized because I've changed it a little bit, but I'm just using this and now I want to extend it. And I know some of you guys find it difficult to do so. Why? I can understand why, because we have something called generators that tend to uh, mess up a lot of things for the expectations for customizing. Um, the generators are basically super cool because they are reading that whole camera selector list you saw on the home screens being used to automatically generate behaviors inside the configuration tree. That's what the generators do. And we looked at that like as a side effect of making the virtual trigger just a moment ago. But this is what you find in here. This is what drives the camera control layers. You see the camera control layers are actually, because I have included Panasonic, Canon, and uh, a Visca camera from Sony. These are the things that has been included um, on the home screen. And that means that for each of these brands of cameras, we have configurations specifically for those, and they are being included by layers here, automatically generated by the generators that are listening to the camera selector constant set, which is what is defined over here. So pretty important concept actually, really, really useful, but also quite difficult to customize. However, we are going to try. And the first thing that I think is, I want when the shift key is held down, this little shift key here, let's see, shift on off on the controller. When, that, when I press this button, then I want to have a layer that will just remove all the references to the presets and give me something else. So a little custom layer here, and I want to create that on top of everything. So basically what I would do is I go down to the layer called normal operation. I mean, if we just look at this, we have something called an engineering menu and the engineering menu gives you access to cool stuff like IP address and so on. And it requires some kind of complex operation where you click a button somewhere in a special way. Or maybe it's the shift key. You press and hold it on the upper edge. No. 
Okay, I'm I <laughs> I constantly forget how to get into the engineering menu. But anyway, we are in normal operation. We'll create a child layer if we do that. Um, our custom stuff. Then it gets created on top of the normal operation here. You see, it's right here on top of everything else. But I need to get some behaviors onto it. So I'll just disable simulation mode. I'll um, hold down shift and drag across these. And then I'm kind of hoping that if I right click, then I would get to this. Huh. And this is why I sometimes struggle slightly because I don't know why I'm not getting that kind of menu. Come on, please. Mm hmm. Okay. Now it says create behavior. What if I want to have multiple of these? No, I can't. Okay. Honestly, this is as frustrating for me as it is uh, probably is for you guys. And we need to fix this. But if I create behavior here, it's asking me, would you like to create this on the layer called our custom stuff, which is the one that we had up there? And the answer to that is yes, thank you. Please create something for me up there. And let's just make it empty. And now you can see that I basically, whenever this layer is selected, this is just blanked out. It has no function right now. If we look at the JSON that drives it, <laughs> this is how simple that JSON is. And that's pretty nice at this point. Okay, so um, we basically need to do that for every single element here. And is there a smarter way? Yes, there is a smarter way. Otherwise, you would just have to basically go through each one of these, create that on custom stuff, and then you have it here. And if you just take the default, ah, okay, so that was empty by default. So may me, yeah, okay, so, okay, let's just do that. It's not too much work. It's okay. Uh, ooh, now it starts doing something else. Ah, it uses the dummy action. You just change it back to basically empty so that it's empty. All right, so um, I kind of broke the surprise to you that it would actually be possible to do this in a smarter way, in my term smarter way, because I like the JSON editor. So what I would do is to go to the edit raw, and that gives me full JSON access to the whole configuration tree here for my PC Extreme. I hold down shift, click this little thing to collapse everything. And then I think if I look at layers, probably the first one here would be my engineering menu. So I'll just collapse that one again. And but this one would be my normal operation. And inside of that one, the top layer here would be my custom stuff. Now, again, if I hold down shift, then I can expand everything I see in here. And I see these four things. But what I will do now is to replicate these um, and probably do this. Now watch out for the commas. So I'll just copy and then paste, 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 paste a number of times. I want to have 12 of these. And um, then I just need to go change this to five, uh, probably change the name here as well. Six. Okay. Um, do seven and eight and nine. So I'm just making empty behaviors. That means that we get no function, but these will also be our um, dummies templates. This is where we can now, it's like blank sheets of paper. We can go fill anything in to these behaviors as we want. And then this is how we're going to build it up. Now let's just re release the last one. Notice that I did not add a comma right here, but you have to have a comma here. This is the JSON thing. Save current file. Okay, uh, and this opened up a new tab. So we'll just go back to this one. And I'm pretty sure that we'll now already see this has updated with all of these. And if you look at the controller, ah, okay. So the last ones out here are not blanked out. They are called something else. Let's just check what they are called, page up, page down. All right, so if I also wanna override those, and I think I do, then uh, we'll <laughs> just go back and edit because I'm not sure we can change the name of these unless we really hack it inside of the JSON. So uh, let's do that. Let's just search up select uh, 11. Can we not do that? Okay, yeah, I'm sure we can select 11. All right, there we go. And um, let's call it page up and page down. Um, this would be one sure way of doing it. And now I'm just thinking, should I really take you guys on a roller coaster ride into how the uh, HVC key map is working? And I'm not sure it's a good idea, but you can see at least that I did something now that means that up on my custom stuff layer, page up and page down now became the new names of these two, although I still 
have the uh, actual name. If you look inside the name, I did not change it from select 12. But um, by the way, why is it that select 10 is being mapped down on these and then page uh, up and down here um, are mapped down? Why, why are they not all called like select um, 11 and 12? This is happening in the key map. So if you look inside the mapped aliases here, then you see that we have something called select one, two, three, four, five, up to 10 mapped over to these, but then we have page up and page down mapped to 23 and 24. Okay, <clears throat> so what if I wanted to go back to the previous state and now I wonder if I can just press undo. Maybe I can. Yeah, you see, pressing undo gives me back select 11 and 12. But what I could do on this layer, and this is the advanced stuff, is to say, let's just create an HVC key map alias here. So I can say, let's, um, let's just see, page up. I want page up alias to come from, to basically I want to take select 11 and make into the page up alias. So if I add this and I add another one, then, oh. so you see what I just did now is to say whatever behavior in here called select 11 and 12, below this layer towards the root, they will now assume a new name called page up. And this is what then brings them into the next HVC key map translation that happens down here where page up is then being routed to the physical hardware component 23 and 24 for page down. So uh, that was <laughs> super advanced guys and uh, something that can be sort of mind boggling and uh, be careful <laughs> how you play with this. But um, it was useful in this case. Now let's move on and then see the uh, original intention was let's do something on this button like recall presets on the number of cameras. Okay, most basic thing you can do would be to say, all right, Let's find a parameter for, let's just say Canon cameras here. Let's search off preset recall. We have something here, preset recall right there. Now, which preset should it be? Well, you probably have like preset one being your default preset. And this is uh, pretty much it. You can see the resulting IO reference up here. It is um, going for camera number one in this case, because that is the ID that I selected. But I think, Maybe if I select here, hmm, select core advanced, let's try that and see what happens. It wants to potentially drive. You see now it's ah, it's trying to drive the in the device index. Nah, we don't want to do that. Remove selection. Okay, so we'll just pick this one. Because the other thing that I wanted to sh mm. No, 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 it was right. Yeah, 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 sorry about that. Okay, so basically <clears throat> the idea is that the, the device index, the first thing after the slash where it says Canon XC protocol, then device, and we have devices like one, two, three, four, and so on. If I know that device number one, two, and seven are the cameras in the kitchen that I want to recall preset number one for, then where this one says variable currently, because it normally thinks that we want to detect this by a variable like a camera selector, then what I will do now is to say, hey, let's put in a literal value and then we can make we can put in a few of them like one, two, and seven. I think that is what I said. So I get this little range here and then I submit this. And actually, um, uh, sorry about that. It's not entirely what I wanted. It is true enough that we want this, but it is over here that I want to have a literal value. Sorry. Uh, so we need to find preset recall once again. Mm, wait. Uh, remove selection. Okay, let's let's find preset recall. It was kind of okay that we had this coming up like that preset number one, because it built this for us. But then we can now remove the selection, select advanced call, and then down here, change this to a literal value. And let's just add a few of those. So number one, number two, number seven, uh, three, became three. Ah, it's even showing the devices. That's right neat. Oh, yeah. So I could just add them like this. Wonderful. There are certain things in this UI that I have never seen before. So that's so cool. But notice what happens in the IO reference. You can actually basically encapsulate that list of device IDs that you want to address with the single button press preset recall in square brackets. So that's the point that I wanted to make here. But um, yeah, this would be a manual way of doing it. 
But hey, it would work, okay? So basically, you could do that, select the cameras like this for preset recall. You could then go into show more, you could do yourself a favor and say on title line number one, for instance, you can write for this one. So that's kitchen, okay? And then you could um, have this one reset position. And now you see this is what this button says basically. And then you probably also want to add a little bit of uh, other things like now the color is already, yeah, the color is set, but we want to have a different color. For instance, you probably want to have like a purple color and the intensity is, uh, it's already dimmed, that is fine. And then if you wanted the whole thing to react to a, um, I mean, what we usually do often do here is using a conditional feedback to just make the button blink quickly when we have a situation where, uh, let me see if we can do this. Because it is, um, let me see, behavior, I, we need to see if uh, it's like last event. And then we have time to now. So if last event time to now, behavior last event time to now is less than or equal to and then the value the literal value could be like 200 milliseconds then you know within 200 milliseconds of having an event happening to this then it should light up and you see actually if I click this one you see nothing is happening okay but if I click this one you see for 200 milliseconds it's lighting up uh, let's just make that 2000 milliseconds and have fun with that so I click hands off goes back all right so that was, um, you, you find this often, we usually use 100 milliseconds because we just have to, we just want to have a click, um, a quick glimpse of pressing the button. Because we have no, no feedback coming back, we can't confirm that it actually recalled these presets, but it will uh, in this case, and maybe it would even be possible for me because we have one of the cameras here, the Canon cameras in the showroom. So we should be able to see that it is, oops, there we go, Canon camera here. So let's move over here. We have it selected on the controller so I could basically take the joystick and move a little bit. And maybe if we just put it on the side, we can actually see this is happening. Okay, there we have the, the Canon camera. Let's just um, use the joystick to, oh, it's zooming, but we need it to move, okay. So we move the camera here around the corner and then we know that this this button here is going to recall presets on multiple cameras, number one, two, three, f nine, and uh, 18. But if I click this one, you'll see that it's recalling preset on that camera and all the others which are not connected today. Okay, so it will work. However, and now we're getting to the point, I think it would be smarter if this was not hard-coded. So I've just shown you a hard-coded way of doing this. I think it would be smarter if these groups could be captured and defined on the controller themselves. So that is what we'll now be looking at. So um, let me see. I think that first of all, we are also in a situation right now where we have not really finished our task, which was that these this blocking out and changing what these buttons do is something that should happen only when you press down the shift key. And I've not done that yet, but it's really easy. All we need to do is to basically click this layer and then over here, add an active if condition. We just edit this and say, if the variable called shift, that one is equal to, and then I think it is on but I'll show you why I know that. Okay, submit. So we now have an active if that basically says if this, this layer is only visible if the variable shift is on. Why would I know that the value should be on? And why even the, 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 the shift uh, variable? Well, if I click this one, you can then inspect that the behavior for this button located on this layer here, because it was found, is uh, the shift uh, variable. It has the hold down um, behavior, uh, master behavior, and that one goes between option index number one and zero when pressed and released. That's the description. And if you study the variable shift, then you can see that this is index zero, this is index one. So the, the hold down is go to one, then go back to off, go to one, go back to off. So these are the values and the reason why I know that it should say 
on inside of this condition right here. And in fact, it does work. So you can see as I press and I release, you see the, the blue bar on the side here, and that indicates that the layer is active. And you can also see it blanks out, and then it's not active anymore. If I right click and press hold down, then we have it permanently enabled until I, I click the shift key again. And that would be useful for what we'll be doing next. So in this video, you have learned how to create a layer on top of the preset selector on a standard configuration of PVC Extreme. That is one way you can customize your standard configuration Skyhoy controller with anything that you want. And we put a hard-coded preset recall action there for a number of cameras that we could then reset by a single button press. This will be done smarter using the groups, but I decided to put that into a second video because it will also be a lot of um, working with Reactor and the configuration. So it's going to take at least as much time as we have just spent in this video. So see you in that next episode.